What's going on everybody? Sharpie360 here, and I got to play the Bellrite closed beta recently and managed to clock almost 30 hours of gameplay during that time. Bellrite is a low medieval action RPG with survival, village building, and management mechanics, almost a cross between Medieval Dynasty and Kingdom Come Deliverance. The premise of Bellrite is that long ago you were forced into protected hiding after being framed for the murder of the prince. Now after years of hiding, you have been forced out of the shadows and must explore the lands, establish your settlement, liberate the citizens and villages, and ultimately lead the rise of a rebellion to overthrow the corrupt queen and her empire to reclaim the lands of Carvania and to clear your name once and for all. We played the demo of Bellrite last year during the Steam Next Fest and it was pretty rough around the edges. I didn't put enough time into the demo to see any meaningful progress, but I enjoyed the time I did spend playing it and wanted to see more. So when the noise team sent me an invitation to participate in the beta playtest, I was ready to jump back in. Join me while I go over all the good, the bad, and the broken discovered during my time in the Bellrite closed beta. And if you find this video informative or entertaining, consider leaving a like and possibly subscribing and I would greatly appreciate it. Alright, let's do this. Right off the bat, the beautiful meadow and forest land environments stand out and remain a highlight throughout the game. Bellride has a pretty unique art and design style which quickly become apparent and shine through the villages of Carvania and in the buildables themselves. Close by the village areas and the main roads looked lush and full of life, but when venturing out into the wilds, the trees and resource patches started to thin out and get a considerable bit more copy-paste generic asset paintbrush looking. Bellright employs a fairly robust weather system, spinning up fog, rain, thunderstorms, sometimes a bit too intense even, and every seven days the temp drops, the rain freezes, and turns to snow, and the coolest part is that we get to see it all happen in real time. As simple as it is, this season change effect was one of the highlights of my time in the beta and I looked forward to winter each week, but this could probably be attributed more to Unreal 5. Other than the environment changing and harvestable plant life going dormant, there was minuscule negative impacts on the rest of the game, if at all. Temperature did not impact my health and made little difference in my movement, which was surprising considering the game indicated winter is coming and that I should prepare. Nighttime illuminated some awesome shadowing and light work, especially with a torch. There was minimal access to graphic setting customization, which made video capture at night a dim and dark deed. Not only the bad weather, but not eating or sleeping had a negligible effect on my character either. This was a disappointment to say the least and took a bit of the serious consideration of survival away. After about 20 hours of gameplay, I did start to notice the small impacts eating would have at least, but it hardly made the effort worth it. There was no real concrete way to tell what your stats were or what benefits you would get from items or consumables other than a vague description and some damage and armor ratings. I hope this changes for the better in the future builds, and I feel like I died from starvation in the demo. There were a number of points of interest in NPC camps and houses to come across, which was a nice occurrence, although some of the environmental pieces did not function as intended, mainly water being strictly cosmetic. The occasional animal or patrol of bandits helped to break up the monotony of run 5 seconds, wait for the stamina bar to refill, run 5 seconds, wait, run, wait, run, etc. This game was an incredibly slow change of pace compared to what I'm typically used to, the stamina bar being the biggest drag of all. I don't think sprinting should use stamina if you're not in combat or a similar situation. Or at the very least, sprinting needs to be drastically reduced on the stamina toll. I'm not a fan of things like stamina being a factor when not necessary, but I think the overarching problem here though is the travel time in general. Everything takes so long just to get from point A to point B. Luckily pretty early on we can craft fast travel signposts anywhere near a road, which helps a ton with travel time for yourself, but introduces another problem altogether, and we'll come back to that shortly. A large part of the core gameplay is constructing a wide variety of workstations, resource and crafting tents, and other various village-like structures. All of the tech first needs to be researched, and then they can be crafted. There are three tiers in the crafting tech tree, and I wasn't able to ascend to the next tier myself, but I assume the buildings and workstations will look nicer in the higher tiers than sticks and flax huts. With the variety in different tents, a good portion of them started to look very similar with small variations between them, which is fine when spread out but when more than a few were built next to each other, they all started to look the same. As far as I could tell, there were no build limits or ranges to worry about other than the existing village boundaries, and you're meant to set up some of these resource tents closer to their harvest spots and work much better when doing so. These can all be used to gather resources, craft items, cultivate and cook food, provide large storage, provide housing for companions, and a whole lot more. Most of these stations will have a manual crafting slot, if applicable, where you can make what you want yourself. The second option is to queue up tasks to the station and have one of your companions 
usually the best suited for the job, <laughs> will be automatically assigned to complete it. You can't manually assign them to a specific station directly, and if you can, I could not figure out how to do so. What I could do is use the priority system that each of the companions have, which determines what they do and in which order. Helpful, but that did not fully ensure the same person would always be crafting. If Brigida was out of the immediate area, a different companion would end up doing the task instead. Sometimes this is fine, but not when I need to level up Brigida's crafting to level 3, and the XP gain in this game is a massive grind. Not thrilled about that aspect. The idea is to have enough of your own settlers so that they can be self-sufficient, but most of the time they are off looking for food just after eating or only carrying one item back to storage. What I'm getting at is that they needed constant intervention on my part to get anything done with them. Babysitter Simulator is something on both ends that I don't want to play. Early on you have to go talk with the Herndine Village Elder to begin on the main quest line and start earning trust and renown. These are two attributes you need to work to level up to gain the support of the villagers. Trust is needed before any of the villagers will consider joining your settlement as a companion. And renowned, which when high enough, can allow you to stage a rebellion and liberate that village from the brigand. Doing quests for the villagers will earn you more trust and renown. The quests, however, are mostly uninspired fetch and crafting and clear quests, and when more than one village gets involved, the travel time back and forth quickly became mundane. Some little solace is found in the main quests. These quests are a bit more in-depth and provide some good world building, but unfortunately, one of the two main quests I was able to start bugged out at the end. Very, very unfortunate indeed. On the list of red flags, broken main quests are pretty high up there. I also experience issues with some of the side quests too, but you're able to cancel those and try again. Some of the quests started having me get into combat, so naturally I looked for some better gear to craft. Well, there wasn't much in the way of offense available yet. I turned to what I could to use, the trusty simple axe. Soon enough I was able to craft a bow, and that was another highlight of mine. The bow was one of the best aspects of gameplay for me. It was just a lot of fun to use, and it felt good for a change. This game being pretty clunky throughout, I was taking what I could get in the feel goods. Back to the melee combat, as most encounters would devolve into bash fest pretty quickly. The combat was incredibly clunky. Bellright has a directional combat system. Much like Kingdom Come, the direction you move your mouse will be the direction you either attack or block. Cool in concept, but fatal if not executed well. And honestly, this wasn't. Manageable? Sure, with a healthy serving of cheese. But any more than two enemies on me, and it was game over. Ultimately, I think a lot of the clunkiness is coming from the animations and the movements themselves. The animations are super awkward and even simple tasks like cutting a felled tree can be a task to line up. So extrapolating this clunk to the combat and things degrade rapidly. I think this game would benefit greatly from a few rounds of polish going into the animations and overall movement. My approach became save first, try to take out one or two with arrows and then get the last one with melee. Sometimes it worked, but other times it didn't, and when it didn't, I'm glad I saved, because guess what else was broken in the beta? Yep, the respawn button did not work. I needed to reload a save game and try again. This was another one of those red flags. How does an oversight like this happen? I can say for sure, if this game comes out and a bug like that is present, it will not bode well for the reviews. Now coming back to the settler companions, this is also a major part of the game and because so, they are essential to success. However, as I've stated throughout this video, they can be anything but helpful a lot of the time. Whether it be making sure they're doing what is assigned or making sure they're fed on our journeys out to different locations without them canceling and looking for food. The fast travel system was pointless when needing them with me and I'd have to run from the main camp all the way to the destination manually. So much time was spent running back and forth in this game, it really needs a better solution. Maybe there's something in the higher tech tiers that allows them to fast travel, but I have my doubts. One issue I kept running into was they seemed to harvest and bring items to storage, and they would craft items in a workstation that had all the required items in it already, but they wouldn't fill the items needed to complete the queued tasks. This meant I always needed to do the in-between and I couldn't figure out how to get them to do it. More hand-holding. More often than not, when I would check on their location and they'd be on their way to the stockpile, they'd be bringing only one item back, and with the incredibly slow walk speeds they have, it was like watching paint dry to get anything gathered. Most of the game I played with two settlers and got a third closer to the end. One with a higher base ability levels because the biggest grind of this game is leveling up either your own or any of the settlers abilities. There are skill books I made them read but that would require quite a few to be effective. Performing the ability in itself would yield 2-10 to 10 XP per action and when the XP requirement to level up are in the thousands, yeah, get ready for a friggin grind fest. Not super thrilled about that either. 
overall the companions AI could really use a couple of coats of paint as well. So, we talked about the good and the bad, now for the broken. There were a couple of absolutely buggy or broken aspects of this game, most of which I talked about, but again, to go over some of the worst offenders, animation jank, leading to clunky harvesting in combat, broken quests, leading to basically a stalled game, water scenery, upon closer investigation, is strictly cosmetic, respawn button, or lack of a working respawn system in general. Companion AI, turning cool mechanics into micromanagement simulators. Unimpressive dialogue. I have a duty to my village first and foremost. I need to know who you are. I'm pretty sure the voice acting is AI generated. If it's not, it's really bad. And overall, the audio needs a serious level balance and normalization. And lastly, the giant snail-shaped elephant in the room. As some of you may know, there is a considerable amount of warranted concern about the future development of this game. And with the current release date updating from Q1 to coming soon, the concerns are being voiced. Bellright is being developed by Donkey Crew and published by Snail Games. Donkey Crew in itself have found themselves at the center of criticism for the seeming abandonment of their previous game, Last Oasis, while that was still in early access. It did not and will not see a full release as far as we know. This is a major red flag for a lot of people who got burned from the game and the events that unfolded, and rightfully so. Snail Games is also no stranger to controversy, and with them being the publisher, much of the criticism is expressing concern that this will just be another cash grab title to help fund the development of ARK. Maybe. Then again, maybe not. I logged just under 30 hours of playtime in the beta and still had much more to discover and do. So Bellright certainly has content enough to be a decent game, and with the right improvements and ultimately completion and full release, it could definitely be worth checking out in the future. All I can say is do your research if you want to be informed when making your decision to purchase it or not. And that basically sums up my time in the Bellright closed beta, in a nutshell. I really did have a good time playing and discovering how the game works. Unless something crazy happens with the development, I think I'll be picking up my own copy when it drops in early access or full release. Carvania isn't going to liberate itself. This video is strictly my own opinions on my experience and thoughts on the beta. I was not paid for this in any way, shape, or form, and I would like to extend my thanks to the noise team for inviting me to be part of the beta. Cool. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video and at the very least found something informative in it. What are your thoughts on Bellright? Are you going to play it when it comes out, or is it going to be a cash grab bake sale? Either way, let me know in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching, and if you found it entertaining at all, consider leaving a like and possibly subscribing. If you're watching over here on Rumble, you rule, so smash that like and follow button. And I got memberships available if anybody wants to check that out, and thank you to the channel members for supporting the channel. Alright, that's gonna do it. Thanks again for watching, and until next time, Sharp Out!